Uh, Lou, this guy's regarded as the leading um, authority in the field of supernatural and paranormal studies, and he's the host of Ghost Nation on the Travel Channel. Let's welcome Jason Hawes. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jason. How are you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm sure, doing man. great. How about you? We're doing fantastic. So uh, season two is getting kicked off tomorrow night, and uh, obviously that comes off the success of, of, of season one. Let's talk about the first season for just a second, because uh, at least we can kind of go back and, and you can tell us some of the stuff that our folks saw. What was your favorite episode of season one? Oh, geez. I mean, every investigation is, uh, is so interesting because whether there's paranormal activity or we're able to figure out what's truly going on, I, I love every investigation. But I'd have to say probably uh, we did a case in upstate New York, which uh, was the season uh, finale of, of uh, first season. And uh, our, our cameras are set up where they alert us when there's activity, there's movement in the house. And at one point, uh, Dave Tango and I were sitting outside watching the monitors going through old footage and uh, past footage. And all of a sudden, one of the cameras alert us to something just walked by and pull it up on the screen. And there's literally a person walking by the camera in an empty house. And we had that on. We caught that on video. Uh, We ran in the house quickly to look. There was no way they could have left the house, let alone gotten into the house. So, uh, I mean, just activity like that is mind blowing because you, you're sat there really scratching your head and trying to figure out what, what's really happening. How long, Jason, have you been uh, doing this? How long have you been interested in paranormal activity? And, and when did you get started? Why did you get started? Well, I, I'm going to date myself here. but Sorry, I've that been, was about uh, 15 I, questions <laughs> in one. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I started, I've been doing it for about uh, about 30 years. And, uh, and we, I've never really a big into the paranormal because I never, I, I, I was always one of those people who, if I can't see it, I, I didn't really care about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but I had my own personal experience, which I saw something. And then from there, I just tried to understand how these things are possible. But in doing so, I realized that there's so many people out there that are willing to call anything and everything paranormal. And that's not always the fact. I'm, I'm, all, I'm one of those guys who I like to get in and figure out what's truly going on for myself instead of taking what somebody else says as as gospel. Right. Yeah, like I had an ex-girlfriend who she saw orbs in every picture. I said, really? It's, it's just a, it's a light <laughs> those, thing. Most of the time, those are dust, bugs, moisture, you name it. There's there's a million different different things, let alone if it's a digital camera, it pixelates around an object and makes it round. Well, let me, let me ask you a question. Can, can only trained paranormal investigators really find or detect paranormal activity? No, absolutely not. I mean, anybody can be an investigator, and there's no professionals in this field. There's no experts in this field. There's just people who've been doing it longer than others. Gotcha. Um, but the main thing is people need to go into these locations believing that they're going to be able to figure out what's truly happening, that it's not going to be, that it's not paranormal. Para just means beyond, so beyond the normal of what we're used to. Um, so beyond the normal. Um, so so you got to go in with the belief, we go in with the belief that over 80% of this, these claims can be disproved. And uh, we film a lot of cases that that don't air. It's just the best ones that do. Like mm-hmm. like tomorrow night when uh, our season uh, season two premiere kicks off, it's two hours long, and it had to be because this case we went to in Biglerville, Pennsylvania. Before we knew it, we went out to help out these great people, uh, Steve and, and his wife Glenda, who were newlyweds, and they were having all this weird activity going on. And before we knew it, it became we had that we had cadaver dogs out there marking spots. We had police show up. We had it became an active crime scene, um, and it just it kept on steamrolling him and it's one of those things where you expect to go out there spend a week there figure out what's going on next thing you know you're there for two and a half plus weeks and the activity we caught let alone working working with the police and and uh and uh, forensics and everything else. I mean, it, it was just such an incredible investigation that we had to make it two hours. That's I'm, awesome. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I'm hooked yeah, yeah. Because you know what? Yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, and, and the episode, by the way, is called the two-hour episode is called the Witching Tree. Uh, years ago, when you would watch one of these shows on television, it was three nipple heads, you know, running around <laughs> an old house, <laughs> pretending to see stuff and yelling. You and get all those on YouTube. And, and we were like, yeah. we we don't know. We're not seeing what you're seeing. What the hell are you guys <laughs> whining about? And, and you can tell how far uh, this is. Come come over the years the paranormal investigation and and you're you're straight up legit you've worked with uh with with, with police organizations and things right Oh, I work with law, law enforcement, uh, government officials. Uh, I work hand in hand with uh, numerous numerous religious organizations because, again, we go in we we go in and write up preliminary reports for a lot of them because we're going in with looking for the true explanation. And I think that they've always respected that. I mean, we're one of the only teams out there to ever have Pentagon clearance because the government called us in to write Patterson Air Force Base and some other locations to investigate because they respected our our. Uh, 
our investigation and, and what we would find. So I think that just goes to show we've been doing this for so long and, and it's real. I mean, we, we keep it real. It's, it's all about, it's all about keeping it real. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, Jason Hawes, uh, one of the hosts of Ghost Nation, joins us on the show. You mentioned Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. You got me all a Twitter over here because I'm a big <laughs> alien guy. They let you in, Wright-Patterson? They did. They did. And, uh, and, and I'm sure we they, were, did, they didn't do it lightly. Uh, no. we Like I said, we had to get Pentagon clearance to, to be able to go in there. And, of course, there's definitely places, and I'm a big alien guy as well, so I, I, I respect that. Um, but there's definitely places that we weren't allowed anywhere near. But um, then again, they, they allowed us to go into their their whole laser complex and uh, shoot the laser. I mean, it was it was phenomenal. But um, and it's such great people out there as well. Just working with the United States uh, military, we've done we've done that numerous times, and uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal people. I got to let Ethan in on the thing here. Yeah. But many alien people, whether you're, you know, an ancient alien theorist right, or whatever, right. or you're just a UFO person or whatever, people regard uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base as maybe having secrets even bigger than Area 51. So that's, that's kind of well, weird. When he said that, I was them like, actually ref- Some of them refer to the, what happened in Area 51 as the, the things were taken to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Correct. Supposedly yep. it's an underground underground facility under the base. So you you are definitely legit if they let you in that facility. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's people in the Air Force they won't let so you. So now what is it? it's tomorrow night, right? That's when the uh, tomorrow night, yeah, two season hours. two two hour episode. Yeah, it's uh, from eight to ten um, Eastern, and uh, I mean I think people are going to enjoy it because the way uh, this uh, us doing this show, especially working with Travel Channel, uh, they just said you get if you guys want to do a show, great, do it your way, and we did. Wow. We wanted to show people how it investigation is really done where we we come in we we working with the people we're hearing the claims we set up the equipment which alerts us if anything goes on but then we dive deep into the research and and the actual true history of the property and this case is strange thing is there's these things called witching trees and a lot of people don't realize that when some people were accused of a of being a witch uh during, through certain religious uh, groups the people would randomly just go missing and uh never be heard from again so of course it's not like Salem with the witch trials, people dropping rocks on you, you just disappear. But claims were that they would bury these people face down and plant a tree on top of them to, to keep them, to keep them locked in. And, uh, so, I mean, we, we call cadaver dogs in figuring, Hey, not a problem. We'll be able to shoot that whole theory down. And it just opened up a can of worms on us. That scares Listen to Jesus. <laughs> it sounds awesome. I know. The first episode again, takes place in Biglerville, Pennsylvania. It's called the witching tree. Jason Hawes joining us now. His co-hosts are Steve Gonsalves and Dave Tango. And again, tomorrow night, eight to 10 Eastern standard time on the travel channel. Jason, thanks for your time, man. We appreciate it. Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Jason. Thank you guys. You guys stay safe out there. You too. You too. Bye-bye.